Hello, everybody. Welcome to TMYS Academy. Today, I'm with Sh Saurav Shukla. Saurav Shukla needs no introduction. He is everywhere. Everybody knows him, an extremely known face and an inspiration for one and all. Uh, today, we are discussing on a topic called story to screen or story to script. Basically, the idea is that when a particular story becomes a script, a lot of, lot of things changes, a uh, lot of attitude changes, a lot of writing changes and at the same time. Uh, a large chunks and large parts of the story changes to adapt to the needs of the script or needs of the uh, new storytelling format. So that's what we are about to discuss with Saurav today. Saurav Shukla, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, Saurav, my first question is, how different is it to read a screenplay from reading a book? Uh, the, so when we read the same story in the form of a book or as a screenplay, why is the experience itself so different? Uh, um, yeah, it's a very good question. And um, because these are entirely two different mediums, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have to uh, first accept that. Uh, what happens is that everybody gets confused and largely people get confused that a writer is a writer. Uh, so, you know, a writer writes. So what's the big deal? whatever the writer writes. But if you, the moment you start writing and you start practicing writing, uh, you realize writing is not one thing. So writing an essay is a different thing. Rise, writing a short story is a different thing. Writing poetry is completely entirely a different thing. Um, writing novels and, you know, readable stuff, uh, whatever you, you write. Within that, there are there are a lot of uh, sections, and mm. there are different uh, you know uh, ways to go about it. Within that, there is a lot of uh, you know difference between different kinds of writing. Mm. And when you write for another medium, mm. the writing completely changes. Uh, it, it just, it is still writing, but it is no more the same cousin of the writing which you are familiar with. So <clears throat> let me start with the, the very first point. So this is a question which was posed to me a uh, long time back, uh, that what is the difference and uh, why uh, a book cannot be simply adapted into a film where when the written material is there. That we will discuss in, in great detail later. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that you have to first understand, you know, you and me read the same book, hmm. which has the same words, which has the same chapters, but uh, things change. Your protagonists, face is different from my protagonist's face. Uh, the, the clothing which the protagonist or the character is wearing, mm. your color is different, my color is different. The room in which the characters are, that room is different in your head and it is different in my head. Mm. So writing lends to that imagination and participation of the reader, mm. okay? Now, uh, the very first thing which cinema takes away, or any visual medium for that matter, whether it's theater or television or any other thing, that it takes your imagination, the reader's imagination, the, part, the, the, the audience's imagination, it straight away tells them, this is the room, this is the color, this is how the character looks. So mm -hmm. you and me will not be seeing a different face of the same character. Now, uh, this is a very beautiful thing in reading and people who, who read uh, always say that, you know, reading is a much higher art than mm. cinema or, you know, there's a, there's a, whole, deb there's a whole debate <laughs> to that. Yeah. That is somehow we just try to make ourselves feel more intellectual, but there's no truth in that, I don't believe. Yeah, yeah. So the, the thing is, the thing is that the, they are two different mediums, right. you know. So, uh, I mean, uh, what you eat in main course is not, it does not hold true for desserts. Right. They both are for eating, 
but you cannot put them in one category and say ki you know i eat a plate full of rice so you cannot have rasgullas full of uh, a full plate of rasgullas you know so uh, that we have to understand that secondly writing whatever kind of writing and fiction writing i'm mainly talking about fiction writing but yes uh, all kinds of writings they are there for thousands of years mm. so it has evolved it has evolved meaning what that the that the readers minds have evolved mm. they have seen enough kind of experiments and they have tried this way or that way you know every way mm. so so for example i mean uh, in poetry there, there are different uh, in history there are uh, different eras of poetry mm. you know kabhi chhaya hua tha to kabhi you know uh, so every kind of thing has been done through centuries and your mind as a reader based on the existing information has evolved and more receptive to all kinds of writing cinema is just 100 years old it is still finding its grammar okay theater is very old Hmm. but cinema per se because people also misunderstand that you know theater and cinema are same they are not hmm. they are very very different mediums uh, so uh, but cinema is just 100 years old it is still trying to find uh, its grammar it is still experimenting and the minds which are watching it are they, they have evolved but you know in a span of 100 years how much can you evolve that much there yeah so the biggest problem as a as a screenplay writer or as a filmmaker what we face when we touch a, a novel a novelist has all like leisurely a novelist can they're so privileged that they can talk about anything so you say you start the story that the man in red kurta was standing by the window looking outside he saw a fruit seller it reminded him of ram dhan kaka now there will be another three chapters about ram dhan kaka who is not related right now to this man's journey okay mm. and through ram dhan kaka you can travel the whole time and the city where ram dhan kaka was and you can still come back and you can also say things which are philosophical hmm. correct cinema per se doesn't like that hmm. it's like a focused conversation because also please understand that you can read a book in 10 days hmm. you see a film in a continuity hmm. it's a very heavy uh full of uh i what is the word should be used i mean it's it's like a full bodied experience but it is also it's, quick and it has to be because otherwise if if i feed in so many things hmm. it's so much of information visually musically audio wise expression wise um uh, you know uh uh yeah i mean it's spoken words everything everything so it's so loaded hmm. that you will get tired you will not be able to watch it for 10 days you can read a book for 10 days you can't watch a film in 10 days which is like a 15 hour film hmm. you know so uh we have to be focused hmm. and a novel can start a subject and may not come back to the subject ever again hmm. and still be beautiful when cinema does that it has tried it everybody has felt betrayed they said 
are you started the story you gave me the idea that it's going to go that way and it never comes that way so you know uh, there are not too many people who are who are great fans of french films because french have made cinema with it starts with some point and it just goes into some other point but what brilliantly they do is that they can confuse you in the journey but at the end of it you get a sense of understanding it all mm. so that is what is a very very vast difference between these two writings if you ever give a novel to 50 people i think if they read all of them can read it mm. correct yeah but to the same 50 people if you give a script i don't think even five people can read it mm. because there's another thing uh we'll talk about it slightly later because it's it's endless what i have started um what you write as an expression of art yeah. as a writer as a novel writer mm. what you write as an expression of art that when i looked at him he looked tall hmm. but somehow he was feeling short hmm. it's it's very artistic okay and it's it's saying what you think about that person correct right cinema does not have the liberty to do that hmm. we cannot say these what you're thinking in your head or the philosophies we do not have um uh, the facility or 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 the freedom to say that so how do we do it so we do it through setups mm. we do it the way the actor looks at the other person and does not answer you know the other character's question or or does not interact or maintain silence or looks away we do it by the color hmm. that what is the color of the room what is the light so so that it can represent all of it hmm. what a writer has written in just five lines and straight away said the mind hmm. so we have to make it feel so it's more of a reflective art rather than a stating art it does not straight straight away so cinema i personally think that it does not like stating it straight hmm. so writing also does that but still there are words cinema yeah. likes lesser words so i'll stop it here <laughs> so now before i go to the next question which uh, is very core to the topic there is one point that you uh, just raised and i am tempted to take a cut towards that yeah you were talking about uh, the intellectual aspect of writing between the two kinds of writing now uh, we all know if you have explored every kind of writing so you know that the money aspect that comes with screen writing or uh, film making is very different compared to the money that comes when it comes to a book or comes to an author right it's a hell and heaven difference but still there are extremely uh, well to do filmmakers film writers who are doing extremely well and they don't need to get into a book writing now but still they are interested in writing a book they want to explore that space do you think that is because cinema only offers them a limited scope to talk and they have far more to offer to the world in terms of written words and that's why they are so keen to explore the book world as well i think uh, uh please excuse me uh for using this um this incident to to compare what you have just said Right. So there's I'll I'll just tell you a small story. Yes, please. Uh but there was a toad on the table. And uh, the man cuts one leg mm. and says jump. The frog still jumps. It cuts the second leg and says jump. Mm. Well, you know, cuts the table and says jump. The frog still jumps. it cuts the third leg and says jump it still jumps it says it it just uh, cuts the fourth leg and says jump and the frog doesn't jump and the conclusion is 
that the frog turns deaf after cutting four legs. So, hmm. my point is that yes, what you're saying is right, but arriving at the conclusion that cinema does not offer is like frog turns deaf. <laughs> okay. No, it's not. Yeah. It is not. It is the human nature mm -hmm. that it's one life I have got and I'll not settle down for one. Just ask people who do not write for cinema, mm. don't they have the desire to write a film? Of course they do. They do. So what is it? Are they missing something in writing there? No. Mm. It is just that they are doing this and they want to do more. Mm. So it's as simple as that. And by the way, uh, you said that, uh, I don't know how much it is true, but if a popular writer, hmm. a best-selling writer, you know, who is internationally accepted, if you compare their money, the film writers do not get one-tenth of that. They get paid in dollars, pounds. Hmm. We don't. Hmm. So that's not, it is just a perception. Okay. Because everything related to films, everybody thinks that, oh, they are the privileged ones. They are the ones who are not doing anything. Blow and up, they blown are... up a little more, blown up a lot yeah. more than real. Yeah, I mean, it's it's same as it's we are, you know, the garden is, well, the grass is always greener on the other side. Other side. You know, it's as simple as that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, going back. Both the author and the screenplay writer are trying to touch the mind of the audience, right? But the skills are quite exclusive, which you were also talking about. So uh, even the screenplay writing format is so different from writing a book. Like uh, while the authors delve into elaborate descriptions and uh, just like you were saying, the philosophy of things, the thought of things, what is happening inside, what is happening outside. But uh, the screenplay writing format is far more crisp. So what are the most important skills of being a screenplay writer if anybody wants to attempt that? First of all, you have to understand that uh, in, in uh, printing material writing, which is novels and, and stories and every other thing, you know, you hardly have two to three people participating in that. Right. Primarily the writer. Hmm. Then if you have a good editor mm. who comes and edits your book mm. and uh, some say of the publisher mm. who knows that what people want to read. Mm. So realistically speaking, ideally speaking, it is one person's journey that mm. you write and, but that doesn't happen. You know, uh, the book. Yeah, that is also, not collective writing. That is not a uh, one person's. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's not really, I mean, it's just three people maximum yeah. participating in that. And that too is at a, at a level of suggestion. Right. Film writing, first of all, is not the primary thing. Hmm. Writing, yes, it provides the basic ground for a film. Hmm. But the film is not about the writer. Hmm. It is about the maker. The one who sees it because film has it's a very interesting thought which is which was told to me by late renu saluja a great editor mm. you know uh, she passed away a couple of years back and she was some really a very very uh, accomplished uh, editor great woman mm. she told me once she said that sort of in films you write at every step hmm. first you write with the pen on a paper then you start writing through camera hmm. and your words are your characters right. your actors are the right is the is the is the calligraphy hmm. you know then you write it through music then you write it through editing hmm. then you write it through grading so it's all part of different kinds of writing and the process of writing in a film ends up 
when you end up seeing it in a in a theater hmm. and if you think of it there are hundreds of people involved in it hmm. and everybody brings in a color a shade a layer to the writing and that's how it's it's very fulfilling when you see a good film right. you know so uh, that is that is the very basic difference between these two kinds of writings so uh, there's always a uh, there's a big debate on this you know even in films uh, some writers get very offended when their dialogues are changed mm. because primarily what is used in the film is the dialogue yeah of a writer you know rest everything is unsaid yeah. though there are instructions also but they are unsaid mm. that we reflect but the dialogues are straight mm. that what you are saying to the other person and how the other person is reacting to it is the same mm. and the writers get very offended that you know i wrote this line and this line is not said instead of this line the other line is said something else is said mm. now um, so and that is largely done by the actors the actors change the line because finally they have to speak it now i always had this debate with people and i always stood for that yes what you write is the guideline mm. is not the final word then it it goes to an actor mm. now as a writer i write and i involve myself in it so i have a whole background where i was born in which family i was born what kind of experiences i went through life what was my expression so that all comes in and the way i speak hmm. that reflects in writing right right now the other actor now i was born in gorakhpur hmm. and i was raised in delhi hmm. correct now it goes to an actor who lived all his life in pader road in bombay and surrounded with parsis and has seen the higher strata society rather than a middle class society right he or she will take the same text and reinterpret it from their life because the basic remains the same the pain remains the same the the joy remains the same the sense of achievement remains the same but experiences differ the expression of experiences differ hmm. and if you don't allow them to do it so they will not be real then they will be just speaking in some other language it's like telling me to do the stock in chinese mm. you know what i mean okay. so uh, whereas in this this whole recalibration of uh, milieu and everything mm. in writing the words are the same but the reader has enough time to recalibrate it and they they mix it with their life and they go through the similar experience what the writer wants them to go through uh, but in films uh, because on the level of making there are so many people involved you have to take their experiences and that's how you you come up with the layered work sure that so uh, when the writing is so i mean so what i wanted to ask is that given that a screenplay format is so script does it actually give give the person whoever is reading the actor the director is it actually leaving space for them to take their imagination ahead is the format designed in that way and that is why it is it comes in that particular format instead of elaborating on each and everything that uh, a writer in a book would otherwise go for so uh, it, it definitely uh, uh, what you're saying is it, it definitely gives space Mm -hmm. uh every writing gives space and by the way it is in the same uh, the other form of writing which is novels and other things it's the same thing because 
the writer writes, but we do not see it like the writer. Hmm. We see it the way we want to see it. Absolutely. So in, even in that, there is, there is room for imagination. And that is also there in, in film writing. Hmm. You know, the writer packs in as much as experience as, as he or she has. Hmm. And then when it goes to other person, how it translates or resonates with the other person is that's how it's like a relay race. That the first one runs, gives it to the other one. The other one takes the same battle and then runs. Hmm. The idea is to complete the race and win it. Hmm. But every person that it's changing hand, you know, uh, adds another imagination or, or taste to it or whatever. Hmm. You know? So, yeah. Saurabh, why don't you talk a little about the use of symbolism, the way it differs in scripts, vis a vis books? The reason I ask this is that, for example, when I am writing my book, I might show the character doing certain things, putting the hand on her head, scratching it, whatever. Uh, in a screenplay or in a, in a film, for that matter, it is not only what the character is doing, but it also has music. It also has a lot of visual clues. So how does, how, how does that symbolism, the scope of symbolism explode when it comes to a film vis-a-vis -a, -vis a book? What do you think? Okay, so, um, well, uh, first of all, I'll give a disclaimer here. Right. That I only write for screens. Hmm. I have never tried to write a novel. Hmm. I have never tried to write uh, short stories. Hmm. I don't. Hmm. Uh, and I do, whenever I have tried even, hmm. my mind doesn't work. Okay. It doesn't work that way mm. because I do not like to write what I'm thinking. Okay. Mm. So, as you said, that a film has music, then it has visual, you know, uh, it has sound effects, it has actors expressing through their face. You have images like mm. painting. So painting is also involved in, in, in films, right? So what, if you are writing for it, first of all, I think that you should get rid of spoken words as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Lesser you speak, more time you have to express. More you speak, more, more you pack in with words, there's less time to feel because my ears will be working and I will be trying to hear what are you saying and make a sense out of it. Mm. If you say less, I will see you more and I will understand what is going inside me. Mm. So that's how cinema approaches the internal journey mm. in this fashion. If you keep saying everything, so imagine films which keep saying, Son, I love you. Darling, I love you. Mm. You know, God, I love you. And so love you is all right. You don't say I love you in real life. Mm. We stay away from, we are shy. Mm. You know, we try and reflect through, through our acts. So a, a particular, any filmmaker would first tell you, okay, listen, instead of giving me this line, give me a moment. So the demand from a filmmaker will be that I know that they, the, the person loves the other character, but do not give me a line for it. Give me a moment where it can reflect that love so that people have. So what cinema tries here is the same experience. What as a reader you go through. Mm. Because it is restricting your imagination by visual, it is giving you other ways of imagining things. That's why we talk about moments. That's why we talk about incidents. That's why we talk about, you know, images mm. rather than just lines. You know, so the very first thing I think that, so I'll just give you a very quick example here. Uh, there's a very good film made by Lake Vijayanand. Hmm. It's called Tere Mere Sapne. 
I'm sure a lot of people have not seen it because, you know, in this generation, a lot of people don't, might not even know who Mr. Vijay Anand was. Mm -hmm. But it's my request to them, please see that film. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in that, I'll just quickly tell you that there is a story. It's the story of a doctor mm -hmm. who was an idealistic doctor who wanted to work in, in, in villages rather than in cities. And he ends up marrying a simple village girl who was a teacher. And, uh, but she meets an accident and the child dies mm -hmm. because there was no hospital and there were not, no, not enough facilities. Mm -hmm. That breaks the doctor's heart. Mm -hmm. And he comes to Bombay where he starts living this high profile life of a doctor. Okay. The wife goes silent after the death of the child and they don't talk anymore. Okay. Mm. And uh, there's an unset tension which they are not addressing. Though he says, what's the problem? What's the problem? She says nothing. Mm. Now there is a scene. There's a scene that the doctor is somewhere else, he's in a party or somewhere. And the news comes that his papers are cleared. So his theory has been accepted. It's a very big achievement. Mm. So the journalists first land up at the doctor's house where this village girl, simple girl, opens the door and she sees this huge crowd and she gets scared and she closes the door. Mm. You cut you see that um, the doctor gets the news in the party and the first thing he wants to share this news is with his wife. Mm. So he rushes home. Mm. He rushes home. Now the scene, the basically what a writer would have written, that he goes there and uh, she says, uh, he says that I want to give you this great news that my work has been accepted. And she says, but where is that doctor whom I married? Mm. You know? This is the basic premise of the scene. Mm. And she says that, where is he gone? The man I knew, mm. you know? So this is the scene. But how the director did it or how the writers wrote it, the scene is that the doctor enters the house and he calls his wife's name, Sheila or whatever. And he says, Sheila. And the camera turns and you see that the room is empty. Mm. The doctor goes in another room and uh, he says Sheila again and the camera turns and, and there is no one there. And the doctor starts getting worried and he goes in the kitchen and she's making roti on a chula which is on the ground because they're not very rich people at this moment though the doctor has started earning money. And she's a village girl so she's making that roti and he enters and there is only one dialogue. The doctor says Sheila, she doesn't even look at her husband and she says how many times I have told you not to bring in shoes in the kitchen and there is silence and the doctor goes back. It's the scene itself said everything mm. that whatever you have achieved is of no value you know where is that man so whatever you know, could have been written in, in a straight fashion has been reflective by the way the two characters interact with each other, the whole setting and everything. So this is what is the beauty of cinema writing. So Saurav, I'll bring you back to the uh, question which demands a lot of attention in this discussion and uh, something that our audience would also want to know from you which is whenever a book to screen adaptation happens, a lot changes from the original story, which is accepted. But sometimes there are a few additions to the story, which wasn't something the author had written, and they are quite drastic, in the sense that uh, maybe a lady who was shown in gray shades suddenly becomes antagonist, or that character itself is completely removed from the, uh, from the context when that book becomes a film. 
So uh, audience obviously starts comparing the experience of reading the book and watching the film, and they start missing those elements, or they just uh, they just feel that probably the film is better. Some feel that no, the story is better. So why do you think such change is necessary when you already have a well structured story in hand? So the very first thing is that uh, you have a well structured story, but that is for the novel. Mm. You know, uh, not for the film. So, do you have a well structure? The structure of what? Mm. Structure of a writer who wrote a novel sure. or a book. But uh, you need another structure for another medium. That is one. Secondly, this whole thing about comparing cinema and book. Mm. If if I make a film based on a book, then if people say, you know, the book was better than the film was not as good as that you want to compare it compare it but always know that you are comparing of apples and oranges mm. you know uh, they both are fruits but it's it's not right to compare them because they're different so my point is that enjoy the apple when you're eating it and cherish the orange when you're having it mm. So why compare that? Why say that, you know, the orange was better or the apple is better? I mean, they both are different. Enjoy both. And that is the first part of this, your, your question. Second is, why do a filmmaker, why does a filmmaker adds or, or you know, delete, subtracts? some things which are already there in the book mm. because in the context of cinema it's irrelevant mm. and i'm and i'm saying that a brilliant book is being made by a brilliant filmmaker and a brilliant film is made mm. we are comparing only that situation mm. so whatever has been deleted or has been added you know, whatever has been deleted because it is out of context of the film. Mm. Because the film has taken a journey, has taken a threat. <coughs> Most of the time, good books, not all, mm. but uh, largely the very good books, they do not depend on one particular thread of line. Mm. It has the quality of going everywhere, like a tree. Correct. So cinema needs the sense of continuity mm. that I have started this journey. You know, the destination still might not be the ultimate thing. The journey is still the thing. But within that journey, I have this assurance that I'm doing the same journey. Mm. That is what normally we follow in cinema. Whereas novels can go anywhere and they're at their own sweet time, they can come back to the subject whenever they want. Mm. You know, you can write 80 pages on something describing something and you know, going into different ideologies and everything, and then come back and then say, yes, the girl was standing there, now she gets the bus. Right. The cinema can't do that. Because the audience, and I, as I said, that, you know, we are still evolving as an audience. Mm. So the cinema is still evolving. So it still doesn't like too much of break of continuity. It likes detours, but it, it likes it you know, that you do it and come back and tell me that we are on the same journey. Yeah. That, is, that is the prime concern we always have in, in a book. Secondly, many a times, and I have personally, I would say there are, there, are, there are so many books. When you set out to make a film, you only find half a film in that. Mm. Or maybe 10% of the film. But something is so beautiful that needs to be said. So then cinema writing starts taking over and starts 
filling the gaps for the story which we are telling in cinema. Mm. The idea is that the more fair comparison should be. That in essence, what a book says and what, what emotions the book makes me go through, does the film do the same thing? Mm. Can it, is it, is it reflecting the similar experience of the book? No, please do not go by the structure of the story and the written words and what, they are all just paraphernalia. The essence of it that, okay, so I felt emotionally moved after reading the book. Mm. Does the film do the same thing? I felt very funny while reading the book. Or I went through a gamut of emotions while reading the book. Is it all covered in essence by the, by the film? Then it's the right film. It's the right interpretation of that book. That's what I believe. Okay. So personally, Saurav, have you ever felt that some stories are meant for books and some are meant only for screenplays? And I mean, uh, in case an adaptation happens, it will have to be a massive change or uh, otherwise, I mean, there are some stories which are meant for two different mediums of consumption. Have you ever So I, yes, uh, I, I think that there are stories uh, which are very difficult to adapt. Uh, and there are films which are very difficult to write mm. for books. Um, but I'm not the last authority on it because anybody can challenge that. Mm. So what happens is you might think of a book and say, you no, know, no, this is not a visual book at all. It has no visual quality. It does not have a visual journey. So it can never be converted into a mm. film. Mm. Whereas a film, as a filmmaker, I might say, you no, know, this is the challenge for me. Mm. And I think it's a very visual book. So that depends on different perspectives. Mm. And anybody who can come, yes. But uh, largely speaking, yes. Um, so, I mean, it's like saying, uh, you know, make a film on a short poem, mm. a feature length film on a short poem. Mm. You can but not by reciting that poem. You have to take the essence of it and build a new story on it. Sure. With characters, with action. With Action does not mean the guns and everything, meaning the movement of the characters and, and stuff like that. So the last question, Saurav, that uh, uh, would you like to name some of the adaptations for which you have read both the book and, the, uh, and you have seen the film, of course, and uh, which ones are the ones that you felt that they have made for gorgeous screenplays, irrespective of the difference or similarity between the book and the screenplay? So there are an N number of films, which are great films, and uh, they are based on books. Mm. Hollywood has been doing it for years. Mm. You know, uh, we have started doing it now. Mm. Uh, and first of all, uh, please forgive me, I'm not a great reader. <laughs> okay. Okay. I I can be uh, passed off as a as a very good watcher. Mm. So I watch a lot of films, mm. and I have read, yes, but I'm not in a great habit of reading. Mm. Uh, so I cannot compare, and I always like I am always tilted towards films, mm. you know. Uh, but there are there are many there are, there are so Gone with the Wind is is based on a book. Yes. So, I mean, uh, English Patient is based on a book. Mm -hmm. uh, so is, I mean, a number of uh, films. Um, um, Gone Girl is based on a book. And my all-time favorite two films, uh, one is Amadeus, which is based on a play, mm -hmm. but that's also a book. I mean, that, uh, that's a play. Uh, it's closer to cinema because theater and cinema are like, you know, distant cousins. Right. Uh, you know. Um, but uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. So there are there are many many of them. There are many of them. 
So I think, uh, please, uh, what I'm saying is that people should stop comparing and getting worried about the book uh will be converted or whatever i mean whatever you do if you write books write it beautifully so that filmmakers get inspired and they take they, they take the journey forward into another medium mm. so it's as simple as that rather than getting worried about will a book be converted into a film or will a film i don't know uh, why writers have not tried it i mean in, in plays people have tried it many a times that the, there are films which are made first mm. and then they got converted into plays right you know so in fact as a matter of fact my book uh, my only book in my name which which got printed uh, which is a play which is mm. called barf uh, i wrote it as a film first mm. and then i adapted it for theater right. you know so that's that sort of uh, before we part what do you think is the key skill of a screenplay writer because our audience some of them i'm sure would have such ambitions to become a screenplay writer if there's something uh, why don't you just uh, throw some light on that so that that could be a very strong takeaway for them so there is no magic pill uh, sorry there is no magic pill uh, for for the screenplay writer okay it is the way you look at it mm. so people when people ask i mean these are i know these questions are asked ki what is a great tip for writing <laughs> you know how to become a great writer it's there is nobody can explain i don't think that anybody has the answer nobody has the answer mm. it's the way you take this whole journey mm. what you figure out so like for myself i have figured out what is what is it that excites me in screenplay writing and why do i like it and why why i am never i never thought of writing a novel because i'm not missing out on anything hmm. i'm just feeling great ki boss i mean this whole restriction that i cannot say what is in my head hmm. you know through words is great enough challenge for me to be a screenplay writer thank you so much sarav for joining us this makes for a great discussion and i really really cherish this uh, conversation with you thank you thank you so much for calling me and all the best thank you so much thank you